be made perfect by love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I had to do something. 
I took a deep breath and looked at it. Maybe it wasn't so big. I smiled and said, hello. That's when I noticed it. It was small, but it was beautiful. I reached up and caught it. This beautiful thought gave me an idea. I turned to that old thought and grinned. From now on, I'll be catching new thoughts. And then I gently pushed the old thoughts aside. I grabbed onto thoughts that were hopeful and gathered up thoughts that were lovely. I held on tight to thoughts that were true and embraced thoughts that were excellent. I danced with thoughts of pure joy. I collected thoughts that were clear and calm. I realized that the more positive thoughts I caught, the smaller that old negative thought became. And whenever that old thought tries to come back into view, I can just say hello and politely ask it to leave and fill my world with all the good thoughts that I choose to put in my mind instead. So here's what I want you to think about for the next few minutes during the sermon. What's maybe a word or a few words that you can come think about when you start to worry or those bad cloudy thoughts come to mind? And I'll give you one that I think of when I start to get worried. I put my hand on my heart and one on my belly. And I take deep breaths and I say, I am loved by God. And I say it over and over. And it helps me remember that even if things are scary or I'm worried, God's with me. So I want you to think of something that you can perhaps a word or a phrase to think of when all those dark spots and then you can and you can tell it goodbye and you can catch a good thought okay and then um afterwards at the when we go out to do the dismissal you can share whatever your word or phrase is with everyone if you want but you don't have to okay all right let's pray dear god when scary or worried thoughts come into our mind Help us to remember good things and to remember that you love us and that we have a community that loves us. Amen. Amen. See you in the minutes. Thank you. 
without the warehouse. May the grace and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Finally, I thank my God every time I mention you in my prayers because I've heard of your love and faithfulness, which you have both for the Lord Jesus and for all God's people. I pray that your partnership in the faith may become affected by the understanding of all that is good among us in Christ. I have great joy and encouragement because I, because of your love, since the hearts of God's people are repressed by your action, my Lord. Therefore, though I have enough confidence in Christ commanding to do the right thing, I would rather appeal to you with love. I call an old man, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ, appeal to you for my child and mistress. I, I became his father in life during my time in prison. He was useless to me before, but now he is useful to both of us. I'm sending him back to you, which is like sending you my own heart. I consider keeping him with me so that he might serve me in your place during my time in prison because of the gospel. However, I didn't want to do anything without your consent so that your act of kindness would occur willingly and not under pressure. Maybe this is the reason that Onesimus was separated from you for a while so that you might have him back for us. No longer as a slave, but more as a slave that is as dearly loved brother. He is especially a dearly loved brother to you. How much more can he become a brother to you? Personally and spiritually than you will. So if you would consider me a partner, become a mistress as if you were welcoming me. If he has more, if he has harmed you in any way or owed you money, charge it to my account. I, Paul, will pay it back to you. I'm writing this with my own hands. Of course, I won't mention that you owe me your money. Yes, brother. I want this favor from you in the Lord. We trust my heart in Christ. I'm writing to you, confident of your obedience, and knowing that you do more than what I've asked. Also, one more thing. Prepare a guest room for me. I hope that I will be released from prison to be with you because of your prayers. Ephesus who is in prison with me for the cause of Christ Jesus. Greet you, as well as my hope of the Mark, our, 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 risk, our, just, our risk, <coughs> the mass, and you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to who? Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Large crowds were crowded with Jesus. Turning to them, he said, Whoever comes to me and doesn't hate father and mother, spouse and children, and brothers and sisters, yes, even one's own life, cannot be my disciple. Whoever doesn't carry their own cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. What if you wanted to know this power, wouldn't you first sit down and calculate the cost to determine whether you have enough money to complete it? Otherwise, when you have laid the foundation and could finish the tower, all who see it will begin to belittle you. They will say, here's the person who began construction and couldn't complete it. But what king will go to war against another king without first sitting down to consider whether his 10,000 soldiers could go up against the 20,000 coming against him? And if he didn't think he could win, would he send a representative to discuss terms of peace while his enemy was still a long way off? And in the same way, none of you who are unwilling to give up all of your possessions can be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Whether online 
nine are here in person for the first time or the 988th time, you are the goodness that is this portion of God's beloved community. St. Paul's is not a building. It is us. The people of God, with all that we are, delightful and annoying, hopeful and uncertain, faithful and faltering. And with the flicker of my candles and the comforting cushion of my lazy boy in the pre-dawn hours, I too thank my God for you every morning when I remember you. For your perseverance and your steadfast faith, even when all seems lost. I thank my God when I watch you gather up supplies for a new school year and remind one another that when the kids come to the distribution table, they can take as much as they need because there is always more than enough. I thank our God for you when you kneel at the altar rail Shed the armor of self-sufficiency, don the cloak of vulnerability and grace, and dare to look me in the eyes and hear the words of infinite and intimate acceptance and love. This is the body of Christ broken for you. It's my great privilege to remind you who you really are and who you are meant to become broken, poured out, and remembered to each other and to wholeness. I thank my God every time I anoint you in the hospital bed and commend you to the rest of the communion of saints, for it is a glimpse of God's grace at work. I thank my God when you bestow forgiveness upon me when I confess I've gotten it wrong. I thank my God when I walk with you on the Indian Head Rail Trail as you unload your heart's weariness and I try to hold space for all that aches. I thank my God for all the ways you showed up on Zoom or YouTube or Facebook Live week after week for nearly two years. There's no question that online engagement isn't the same as embodied worship together, but it's all we have. And I thank God that you did not let a screen rob you of your trust and hope in the God of the past, the God of the present, the God of the future, or the truth that we all needed to experience you. I thank my God for how you have continued to do hard but necessary things, especially all of you who in 2020 responded to a growing awareness of the gap between our nation's highest ideals and the reality for so many of us. Though it's my job at Rector to help lead you through such crucial periods, I confess what some of you already know. My soul was crushed by the response within and without this community when George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery were murdered. And I confess to you, I wasn't sure if it was safe for my spirit to be in a place in which some people refused to acknowledge a long-standing struggle or were more interested in repeating news headlines of so-called wokeness rather than admitting that they did not and do not have the full understanding for all that was and is. Or that we are called to embody our baptismal covenant and faith in all we say and do, which means seeking the welfare and dignity of every human being. And when I was worn down, I thank my God for the strength of so many of you and of your lay leadership's resolve and unwavering commitment to the gospel. You see, even though I bring an acutely, an acute perspective and experience to this conversation,
conversation. This was never about me. This has always been about all of us and the kingdom of God. This has always been about becoming our fullest beloved selves. And I think, my God, that people like 80 something year old Betty Thompson sitting back there said, who said to me, St. Paul's has always stood on the right side of God and love, and it will not stop now. And y'all haven't stopped, not because of anything I've done, but because of what you have done, scary and uncertain as it may be, public or private as you may do it. And for those of you for whom these truths make you uncomfortable or annoyed, you'll be okay. And I thank my God for you that you keep showing up and testifying that the God who began a good work in all of us will carry it on to completion. I thank my God for you who recently have joined or renewed your membership with this community and have taken a risk on this perfectly imperfect corner of God's kingdom. You expand our table and help us to see just how rich God's kingdom is meant to be. And I thank my God for you who have been here for eight years or 18 years or 88 years. Because you have nurtured a foundation of Christ-like love and inclusion for everyone, especially our littlest ones. And you have embodied what it means to love and raise each other up. I thank my God for you who may not hear this epistle, you who have felt abandoned by God or the church universal. Your absence is its own presence. Thank you for keeping us free of empty platitudes, and we will always be here when you're ready to return. I thank my God for you and for all of this and so much more because these eight years, especially the last three, have been some of the hardest of my life. And they have been some of the holiest of my life. And even when my soul and body have wanted to call it quits, even when I'm not sure I can take very one more beloved saint of God, even when I can't or I couldn't tell my left from my right, and somehow your wardens and I had to make public health decisions that would relieve others and frustrate others. Even when I joined with the writer of the beloved hymn, Come Thou Count and Declare, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God of love. I can't help but give thanks and say, here's my hurt. Here is all of our hearts, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for my courts of love. In all of this, in all of you, I have been like a confounded Mary at the empty tomb declaring, I have seen the Lord. Because at our core, we are a community whose whole existence rests not on morality or ideology, but on a God who brings forth life out of death. A God who in Christ is always making things new. So I give thanks to God for how each of you, in your own way, embodies resurrection. And now I join Paul and Lydia and all the other fumbling followers of Christ to make my appeal to you in love. The task that called us eight years ago beckons us still. To let yourself be loved by God as you are, not as you think you should be. To love this broken, hurting world with all that you are and all that you have. Because if not us, then who? And to fix your eyes on the glorious Christ who has secured a blessed wholeness, belonging, and rest for all of us one day. And when I talk about banking your life on love, I'm not talking about the love of your family, wonderful as it is. I'm talking about a love so fierce and relentless 
and so in pursuit of you that such love left a realm of glory for the messiness of flesh and tears and aches and worries and blisters and hugs and it fleshed himself in Jesus, Mary and Joseph's baby. I'm talking about staking your life on a love that has faced betrayal and grief, uncertainty and rock bottom, despair and looked us squarely in the face and declared with outstretched arms, give me your word and I will give you my best day after day. I'll give you a new tomorrow. I'll love you into beauty just when you think there is nothing left for you or your story. This is the love that awaits you every morning, awaits you to say, yes, I built my life here on this and no other. No other. Only when we embrace and accept that we are loved and beloved can we then love and see it in others. I'm not telling you a secret when I say that this world needs it because this world is terrible and cruel. And it is also oh so beautiful and holy. Our task, therefore, as Christians, is to hold and weep with the broken and hurting and to walk each other home over and over. Be it a fellow parishioner, a co-worker, or an overwhelmed, overworked, and underpaid parent at our partner elementary school. Or a person whose brain has been ravaged by addiction. Our task is to sing a new world into being where the lion and the lamb lie down together. Our task is not to be quick with answers, but to be gracious in asking better questions. Our task is to shun the complacency of what's familiar and not be afraid to say goodbye to what we've always known, for out of death comes life. And we're in the business of proclaiming death and resurrection. This is my appeal. And it is an appeal that we can and must do together, for we have been doing it together. These last eight years and for decades beyond and decades to come when I am long gone. Friday, as I was writing and rewriting, a story came to mind that best captures the way that you have done this in a way in which you have embodied the kingdom of God. Some of you may remember, but some of you may have not heard it. Six years ago, I think it was the second or maybe third time we were hosting the Safe Night Winter Shelter. Some of y'all unapologetically broke the official rules that said no one can come inside the doors before 6 p.m. And some of you, many of you, who our beloved older saint said, no one should have to sit in the cold and snow. And you said, I don't care if the folks at Lifestyles get mad at us. And you risked a scolding. And you took out the cross of love and you opened the door, breaking the rules. And in the words of the late John Lewis, you made good trouble. And you did it again the next day. And you did it again while serving home-cooked meals on our very best china because you all know that one's economic status doesn't dictate one's worthiness. And you did it while rocking us two seven-month-old twins so a weary single mama could get some shut on about for an hour even though the world said you can't do it. And you did all of this when two years prior, such a notion was more than a pipe dream for some and a fear for others. And you brought heaven to earth. Oh my God. And all of you still showing up to life and doing the hard work, whether that hard work is around intractable grief, your fear of aging and being alone, your doubt and disappointment with God, your past, or anything else, you have shown me and so many others how to keep showing up when it's easier to walk away. This is the path from 
Good Friday to Easter morning, and it's not fun or easy, but man, a glorious Thursday. So as we embark upon another chapter, a chapter yet to be written, may you let yourself be loved. May you embody that love. And may you never lose sight of the glory of Christ that is your destiny and your hope. Dare to be open to dreaming and writing another chapter in your life and our life. Because Christ is making all things new and we're finding us day after day. You are precious and holy and beloved of God. And not only am I grateful for you, God is grateful for you. Eight years. Take a deep breath. Where have you been? What have you lost? What have you gained in your own journey? Now fill your feet on the ground. Feel the breath in your lungs. And behold, you are alive. You are meant to claim the life that is life. For alongside heartbreak, let blossom unconditional love. Alongside disappointment springs awe and wonder. After death, resurrection. Over and over and over. Until one day our striving shall be no more. And now unto the one who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. According to the power that is at work in us. To this God of love be all honor and glory from generation to generation. Awaken in 
us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. We pray for the community. On this first Sunday, we pray for our first responders. Jimmy, Jen, Bush, James, Annie, Pat, Pablo, Connor, and Lindbergh. God of truth, inspired with your wisdom, those whose decisions affect the lives of others. And all we ask for integrity and courage. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. Bring us closer to Christ in one another and in love as He loves us. We pray for those in need, including those on our burdens. Debbie, Susan, Stephanie, Audrey, Corey, Donna, Richard, Gwen, Virginia, Joan, Kevin, Autumn, Donna, Grace, Doug, Skip, Andrew, Susan, Karen, Kathy, Carl, Sally, Donna, Diane, Jack, Joyce, Barbara, Ed, Rogers, Vic, Tom, Vera, and Betty. God's hope. Comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. And may they know the power of your redeeming love. Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in making people whole. We remember those who have died, including John Lindsay, and those who mourn. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in the faith of Christ, and those whose faith have known you alone. Abba, into your hands we commend them. Give comfort to those who mourn. Bring them peace in their time of loss. We praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. May their examples inspire and encourage us. We pray for ourselves and for our ministers.
Here is the wine pouring free, the washing away of fear. Here is life abundant, a table of peace for all. May this peace be in us and among us a sign of hope for a world renewed. The peace of the Lord be always with you. not to do a fair a retirement celebration because Vicki will still be among us and so I honored that. But you have served among us as Sexton for 26 years and we give thanks for your years of service and your commitment to this church. And we want to honor and recognize you for all your work and how much you mean to us. Everyone, uh, if you, as you come forward, if you're new, just grab a little cup, 
uh, and we will pour the, after receiving the bread, uh, the, dual, the chalice bear will pour the wine into the little cup from which you then may consume and then place um, in this little bucket. If you prefer to receive a blessing in little communion, just cross your arms on your chest and I would be happy to do so. Feel free to stand or kneel, whatever is comfortable for you at the altar. I will also bring communion to those in the pew who need that. At this time, let us bring forth the fruits of our life and labor unto the Lord.
Christ the bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take me. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, to remember me. Therefore we proclaim, Glory to you, Lord Christ, your death we show forth, your resurrection we proclaim, your coming we await. Amen. Lord Jesus. Therefore, loving God, recalling your great goodness to us in Christ, his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which we offer through Christ, our great high priest. Send your Holy Spirit and these gifts of bread and wine which we receive may be to us the body and blood of Christ, and that we, filled with the Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the service of your kingdom. United in Christ with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honor, and glory are yours, here and after, now and forever. Amen. Savior Christ is called we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We be your name from our body, for we are all share in one another.
stand or kneel for our post communion prayer? Let us pray. Gracious One, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you had us as your Son and of our Son. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and the hope of the day of glory. May we who share Christ's body live in this risk of life. We who drink this cup and bring life to others. We who the spirit of life give life to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all the children shall be free. And the whole earth will live with courage and name. Amen. Please, um, there's a form back there. 
uh, that you can fill out. Um, you can give it uh, to me, or you can give it to Cheryl, our rescue person of the day, or to even to Steve, and I do hope you'll come to the tree. We're very excited about that. We have leftover ice cream and stuff and popsicles from last week's social, so if you want some ice cream and stuff, you can go to coffee hour for that. Um, and, uh, um, hold on, I know there's something. Oh, name tag. We made name tags for everyone. Um, unless we've seen you wearing one, then we didn't make them happen. So please remember to wear your name tag so that we can make sure that we know who each other is. Don't we? Don't take for granted that everyone knows who you are. They're at the. They're in the back pew, which you can grab if you lost doors and you need it. Uh, let Vicki uh, or Cheryl or me know or fill out one of the few cards and we'll get one made for you this week. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, this week in the, in the midweek, you're gonna see a big long list. And it's the same long list that's hanging on the bulletin board um, on the way to the parish hall. Of all the different things, all the different ideas that we came up with when we gathered together a few weeks ago, on how we can uh, expand and enhance our community ministries. And this list is going to be simply some next steps. And I'm asking you all to take a look at that list and where you feel called or you have a special gift or a talent or you want to make a telephone call or anything else, uh, to, to take a look at that list and say, yeah, I'll do that. Um, so there'll be some specifics on it. And it's all going to be easy, but the, but in order for this ministry to continue, we have to take first steps. And so that's what we're doing right now is making a list of the first steps so that we can move forward with, with various different things. So most of it's going to be very, very easy, but it's only easy if we do. Thank you. Also, after the service, there'll be an information session down in the hall for to talk more about the prayer buddy program if you're interested in being in a prayer buddy if you've been a prayer buddy you don't need to come just make sure you let me know if you want to learn more about it please come we, we need more prayer buddies we've got like 14 kids that have requested prayer buddies and i want to make sure that they all get one so uh if you're not sure what it's about or you're on the fence come and learn more it's a great opportunity <laughs> ministry all right please stand for the blessing May the God of hope fill you. May the God of peace pour you into the world and keep you an eternal life. And may the God of love always remind you that you are beloved and you are meant for more than this world could suppose. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>
Look for something positive in life, even if someday you have to look a little harder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, I promise you, you can do it now.